In fact, please tell the viewers, Tyler, how are you feeling? I, I I had some neck pain when when we were when we had started talking, just discussing random stuff. But now that we've done all of these motions, I I feel I feel ready to go out and run. Yeah. <laughs> Hop a flight over, Kai. Let's uh let's go for a run down the neighborhood real quick. Let's see, it's next. My mic's muted. Moment, my mic's muted, Kai. Can you hear me? <laughs> my, my mic was muted. Ah. Oh. Gosh darn it. That's all me. Oh yeah, you was testing me out, isn't uh, it? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta show you something before we get started. Your favorite video or my favorite video of yours. You yeah, say jeans are really bad for your circulation, so you should wear joggers. So I got back okay. from work and I changed into joggers just for our meeting. So uh, well done. <laughs> <laughs> are you still are you still wearing jeans in general? Uh, unfortunately, yeah, because I um, when I have to go into the office, we have casual, casual days until the pandemic is over, okay. and casual, you can't wear sweatpants or open-toed shoes or anything like that. You've got a T-shirt you can wear and jeans. Um, I have these like Under Armour pants, which are kind of stretchy, and I try to wear those as much as I can. But I mean, it's tough, man jeans you can just feel how, yeah, how you restricting can they are yeah jeans, jeans are very restrictive mm -hmm. <laughs> uh over here like in, the, in europe we've got these new fabric that, that looks like jeans mm -hmm. but it's very um flexible so all the kids are that's what they're wearing nowadays <laughs> yeah, we have those here too they call them jeggings because they're like Jegging. like material <laughs> that they kind of stretch <laughs> exactly <laughs> and then how's your day been tana it's been very good so far. Um, I just got home from work. I work in IT. Um, so lately, it's just been so, so stressful trying to get uh, everything set up so people can go home and work from home. And I'm the only person for about 75, 80 people. So getting oh, wow. all of them home has just been, a, been an adventure. Um, wow, but you, things wow. have been great. Um, you better, uh, you, it sounds like it's quite an important role you have, isn't it? And, and, indeed. Um, and the good thing is my bosses and the people that are higher up in the company realize that when it's an insurance company. And, you know, insurance people might not be too concerned with IT or they may not realize the importance of it, but my bosses do, and I'm, I'm very fortunate for that. Well... But well done. Uh, how have you been feeling in your in your mental health? It's it's been very very stressful lately. Um, fortunately, my girlfriend, I moved her into my house um, as this pandemic has been going on. Rather than quarantining, we've been kind of quarantined together. Having yeah. her here has been fantastic for for my mental health. Without her, I'm I'm not certain where where I would be. Um, and about a year ago, I got a dog. Uh, he's currently at my parents' house, but pets, man, the the dog has just been so good for my mental health because without him, I don't think that I would leave the house where if you have the dog, you have to go take him for a walk and it, it, it gives you a little extra push to get out of the house. You you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Where, You're really responsible, isn't it? Yes. And you can go get the much needed fresh air, the much needed sunlight and get out of these fake light <laughs> and actually get some real, real sunlight. So that's, uh, yeah, that, that's great. But overall now, when, when everything first started, um, it, it was, it was kind of tough. I, I, I won't lie. Um, a, lot, a lot of stress and a lot of late nights working um, in trying to get everybody set up and just dealing with issues. And that takes a toll. Um, when you work long hours and you're working seven days a week 
and you don't really see the light at the end of the tunnel, it's, it's really difficult. But now that I've set in and I can see the light at the end of the tunnel, everything is, is, is getting better. And you, you always repeat the importance of having a, a mantra. And my recent mantra that I've come up with is, or not really come up, but one that you hear all the time is, this too shall pass. And that's very important to remember in these times where this is not how things are permanently going to be. This too shall pass as well. We will be back to normal, but we just need to get through the tough times. Because without the tough times, how would you, how would you know what the good times were? How would you know that you're in a good time if you don't experience the bad times so you know the difference between them? But that just just telling yourself that when you wake up in the morning, you're thinking, oh, crap, I, I got to do this. I got to talk to this person who I don't necessarily enjoy talking to that that much you think you know this this is just how things are now this is not how either i will feel or how i will be how how things will be that long into the future this this too shall pass just be in the present moment man <laughs> yes exactly stay There's grounded one, stay present exactly yeah one of the one of the constants in our universe when life is change is <laughs> you know it's, that's something that's in that, that, that you can always bank on that things are always forever changing so even when we say we, we're going to reach normality what really is normality <laughs> yeah very true the normality really is just now the present moment no matter what's happening that is the, that is the normality and normal for you over in the uk and normal for me over in the united states are mm-hmm probably two completely different things. So everybody's normal is exactly completely it's very different. Unique. Yeah. Indeed. It's very unique to the perspective. But the constant there is also you just said it, you and thank you for mentioning it. The constant is also that we all perceive things uniquely. Yeah, so that's a fundamental truth as well. Everybody's lens is different that they're seeing exactly. the world from. Exactly. So whenever I feel that I I might not agree or disagree with someone, I always remind myself, it's just another perspective. No one's right, no one's wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even with ourselves, we might think of something one day, and in the next five seconds or five minutes past, we might think differently. So it's, it's no, nothing is really set in stone. So that's what we describe as being, acknowledging impermanence. Impermanent, impermanence means things are always forever changing, including our perspective on things. <laughs> Indeed. Yes. Wise but words. Turner, yeah, Turner. So we, we get to meet. <laughs> <laughs> I, like I said, I've, uh, I'm not sure how, how long, if, if you've been recording this, but before we got started, actually, I, I have been watching your videos for a very long time and being able, I, I'd, I'd rather have you in the States, because I know you've talked to going to New York uh, once, you know, everything's right, but I'd rather have you here actually massaging me and working on me and using the tiger ball on me, but second best thing, I guess, uh, for, for our first meeting. Yeah, I look forward to that. The plan is to eventually have some kind of workshops and I can get people involved and we can instruct and also demonstrate and teach people how to do this. The main thing is I'm not just able to help people on a one-to-one basis, but I'm always, as you notice in my videos, I'm always teaching and showing how I do what, what I do but it's always easier if you actually have someone to really to feel you isn't it so you can feel how it's, it is I'm, I'm a very visual learner and I learn by doing so if somebody were to do that to me I would understand and you know you can watch a video like uh, where you're massaging somebody's legs and feet or you're massaging their back in a massage chair and you can see the techniques you're using but until somebody actually does it to you, at least for me personally, the way I learn, that's, uh, that's a game changer, really. And I've tried some of the, the back uh, massaging techniques on my girlfriend, and some of them she likes, and I've picked up some good tips for you, so I do appreciate that. But, um, that and your goal is very noble. I know that you said in one of your videos where your goal is to have everybody be able to help each other for free. 
you're free. Yeah. And and that's that's a very a very noble goal. And um, I'm just happy to support you and happy to talk to you. Certainly. Uh, just imagine that. It makes my my heart warm up when when you mention this, isn't it? Can you imagine yes. a world where the moment we are born, everyone knows how to help each other out? <laughs> yes. the The world will be a, a much different place from the the lens both you and I view it. Yeah. Uh, certainly. Certainly. Yes. So in my culture, we always talk about maintenance or prevention is better than cure. So in this vision that I have of, of the world is if we are able to maintain and help each other, rarely will we see any of us have any very bad illnesses. You know, although there are certain thing, illnesses that may arise that we have no control of, but in general, we can see a world where most of us be very healthy. It, so it's all about the... It's all about the proactive maintenance, isn't it? Rather than the reactive after something has happened to you where you need doctor's help rather than proactively maintaining your body uh, before any, anything awful happens to you, before any of these illnesses come into to effect, no matter what they are. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Very exactly right. Because I feel, um, I have, I've had some stick sometimes in the past where people say that, oh, I say don't go to the doctors and all these kind of things. I don't mean that. I just mean that if we maintain our health and prevent, we can really prevent having to go to doctors. For many of us, we end up going to the doctor when the pain is too unbearable. Mm -hmm. I always say to people, our body is always showing us signs, you know, always telling us what's wrong with it or what's right with it. And if we become more mindful, we can... Completely, we don't, we don't need to wait until the alarm bells stop ringing or the, be- or the pain is too unbearable. You know? So that's what I mean by, you know, if you look after yourself, you don't need to see, see the doctor. And it doesn't happen overnight, does it? It's, it's a, very, a very long process where you can realize these things that are happening to your body rather than waking up and, oh, my goodness, my, my heart is, I, I have a heart attack now. You, you, you've had those um, indicators throughout. Yes whatever you're experiencing where you can do something about it like you said until the pain becomes too unbearable and you need to see somebody so you can get help yeah exactly so it's my vision to to teach this from a young age so i'm also a teacher of, of my family tradition in qigong which is a form of qigong and if we show it's basically just showing and playing you know we if we play this this game of qigong in the morning and we invite to have the space there for our children to join us and most most of the children will do that they're, they're always trying to assimilate to what us adults are but you know if you can imagine being a child if you start copying your parents doing qigong or a, a form of moving meditation you'll be set for life mm-hmm. <laughs> you no know, it's, it's a life hack and um it's, it's a beautiful thing you know it's a moving meditation so let's go towards the, the mental health thing yes i also am an advocate of mental health awareness I don't know if you're aware, I too myself suffer from, from, from mental health. I was so not I, aware, but uh, certainly yeah. thank you for sharing. Yeah, that's why it's very close to my heart. You know, I, in the past, I, I, I've been so depressed where I committed suicide. So mm-hmm. I would describe myself as a survivor of, of suicide. So now when I help people, I help people on many levels, not just on a holistic, physical aspect, but also on a mental and psychological aspect, and always coming from a space of having experienced it myself. So you're like a rela- very relatable to, to what's happening with the person. Indeed, and I, I shared some of that, that with you too. Um, and we, I, I feel like that there are so many people out there who are scared to speak up or they're embarrassed or whatever the reason is where they're dealing with mental health issues or diseases or whatever might be affecting them where they just don't talk to somebody. And like we said, it's the same for mental ailments as it is for physical ailments, isn't it? Where your mental ailment builds up and builds up and builds up your depression, your anxiety, everything builds up until you reach a breaking point and it's too late, isn't it? 
Yes, exact same. Yeah, you've hit the nail on the head. Exactly mm -hmm. same. Mental and physical is really the same. If we, we can both maintain they're, and prevent all, yeah. They're tied together, aren't they? Yeah. That's what the holistic perspective is about. It's always not just decompartmentalizing or separating the mind from the body. We always look, look at the whole being. So very important. But Tana, please, let's move on with this session, yes? Certainly, yes. I, man, I could talk to you all day, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> this is very, very enjoyable conversation, Kai. Thank you. Uh, I'm, yes. I'm very honored that you've, you've made contact with me, yes? And Indeed. I, I acknowledge you and thank you for acknowledging me. And uh, I appreciate us sharing this space and this time together, yes? Likewise, yes. absolutely. Yes. So please, moving on with yourself, I'm aware that you have some anxiety issues. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you described to me in, in your mess in your email or your message messages to me. Mm -hmm. So please, at the moment, what is it that you would like me to help you with most? Just close your eyes for a second. Just close your eyes for a second, Tana. Yes. So what, what I'm going to do? I'm asking you a question, but in, rather than trying to find the words. I want you to feel right now what it is that's within you that you can see that you would like some help with. Do not try to find the words just yet. Just look within yourself. Take some time to observe this. It could be, for example, a place within yourself that you can't see at the moment. It could be some kind of feeling that you have been aware of for some time but you can't explain why you have had that feeling. Or it could be some kind of memory that keeps me jumping in and out and keeps them taking your attention or distracting you from the present moment. These are just examples. So please, in your own time, look within yourself, just feel, just observe what it is that your being is trying to tell you. You, the character Tana, the person that is driving that vehicle that you are in, what is it that your vehicle is telling you? Take your time. It's telling me to slow down. It's telling me that I'm moving too fast in aspects of my life and that the first thing that popped into my head was I need to stop and smell the roses. I need to slow down and stop moving so fast. And I need to be more grounded and present in the present moment as opposed to looking into the past or looking into the future so often. The main thing that's coming into my head as you were talking was I need to slow down. Good, well done, Tana. So the key, wo key words there was my head or what was coming to my head, I need to slow down, yes? So from yes. this, I'm looking at yourself, I can see that there is a disconnection between, in quotes, your head and your body. Yes. Mm -hmm. but when you did this, when you took some time, closed your eyes, it allows, it allows you, Tanner, the character, to really look inside your being. So are you aware that Tanner is a character? Indeed. Yes. Yes. I don't know if you watched the video, um, Exit the Matrix. Did you watch that series? I did. I did, Yes. Yes, and did it resonate with you what I was describing it, in that video? It, it did, and um, it it makes me want to wait for the summertime so I can go into the water and actually do what what you've described there. Um, yes. Okay, so just then you had had experienced a very short, brief moment of mindful meditation, and because you felt safe and you trusted me. Uh, I ask you to close your eyes. And this is what happened. As an observer looking at you, as you spoke, the very first sentence that left your lips as you manifested it, it sounded like the words of a teacher. And in the very, towards the end of what you was talking, and even throughout, throughout it, the way that you was holding yourself, you looked like the perfect student. So what I'm saying wow. here is today, through that mindful meditation, you experience for yourself what it means to be your own teacher and your own student. 
does this make sense what i'm saying it it, it does so do you recommend me just and and that is what mes- meditation isn't it that, this is kind of my eureka moment meditation is stopping and listening to your own body and your own mind is it not where you're letting your mind just go wherever it does and you don't try to influence your thoughts is that exactly. is that correct eureka yeah it's actually eureka. wow wow it's always, meditation is very simple um the reason why many people find it in quotes hard is because the ego or the character thinks too much about what meditation is rather than just doing it and they almost have the archetype where you're sitting like cross-legged and almost where where that's that's not every single type of med- meditation is it where you you mentioned that there's walking meditation and the meditation that we even just did right there yeah so it's just all, that symbol that picture that people have in their eye in their head is actually a blockage to allow them to meditate many of us many of us are too too transfixed on concepts too too transfixed on ideas the practice of meditation is just to do as you say just to watch and when we say watch we say go inside if you close your eyes it helps some of us can't close our eyes but for yourself how old are you uh, tana Uh, 30. 30 so for me you're still a spring chip (laughs) yes yes yeah you still have the ability to close your eyes unhampered Mm-hmm. You will find that some of your peers, maybe a bit older, or even your parents, when you ask them to close their eyes, you will see on their face that they are trying, they have to force their eyes closed. Yes, for yourself in the moment, you don't need to do that. Yeah, that felt means, very natural. Yeah, yeah, which means that in the same light, when you close your eyes, you are able to watch without any force. Yes? So when yes. you have your eyes closed like this, just watch what's happening. Just watch what's happening. And the more you do this, the more then you can allow your body to freely express itself. So remember, throughout that simple guided mind or meditation, I said to you, watch what your body is trying to show you. So the practice of Qigong or Li Qigong, my family tradition, when we, when we make all these movements, these movements are coming from the internal. We start off by stillness. We watch our breath, and as the breath starts becoming more evident, when the ego really watches the breath, then it allows the body to start moving along with the breath. And this is why you start seeing all these movements start taking place externally. This is no different to when people are dancing, or when people are fencing, or when people are playing basketball or swimming, Mm -hmm. or when people are painting or singing. These are all expressions of things that are happening inside. Yes. So yes. That makes that makes sense. What I'm saying is it? It, it does. How do you recommend that one breathes when they meditate? When I was closing my eyes, how how should I be breathing? Should I be going in through the nose, out through the mouth, or how do you have a breathing pattern? Right. So ten of the the character. Mm-hmm. This question you have here is a concept. Mm Because here is a question to you. Who taught you how to breathe? I I did not. It's something that came naturally. And that's the answer. Mm -hmm. Wow. The answer is you don't don't need to know how to breathe, but you already are doing it. So so natural, just be completely natural. Just, yeah, just watch. Yeah. For some of us, when we close our eyes, Straight away, if you are watching your breath or you find it you're hard to breathe, that means that you need to really just allow your breath to, to come and go as it pleases. When someone is concerned about their breath, it means that somewhere subconsciously, both subconsciously and physiologically, they are holding on to areas of their body which is not allowing their body to freely breathe, freely express itself. That, that makes sense to me because I just did it while you were talking there and I could just feel the breath. And, and that as, as you were explaining that and as I asked the question, I remember you say, watch your breath. You don't say, breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. You say to watch your breath. 
So yeah. that that says it on on its own. Yeah, I just say watch it. Yep. So when I when we do our when I do like a holistic therapy when I touch people, there's some points where I would make them consciously take a breath in. We only do this when we get into a meditative state. Because mm -hmm. if you allow your ego to start controlling your breath, this is when you become very, you have serious problems. Does this make sense what I'm saying? It does, yes. It's almost like this. When the ego tries to solve a problem, it becomes the problem. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. Because the character really is a figment of its own imagination. But if the character now just watches the physical being that it embodies, the physical being will stop showing to the character what is real, what is really happening. So here is another example. Sometimes someone would say, oh, you are giving me a headache. You are giving me a headache. But if they had to take the time and just close their eyes, they realize that it is not the other person giving them the headache. It is themselves. Yes. Yes. So this is why we practice mindful meditation. And it happens, the more you practice, it becomes nature. But the main thing is, take some time out throughout the day to consciously practice. And do not have any anticipation of how long you should practice. Have no anticipation whether you are doing it right or wrong. Because remember, all it is, is just watching from within. That is all it is. Wow. Yes? Yes. So let, me, let me remind you again. Mm. In the beginning of that mindful meditation, you sounded like a teacher. You said, my body is telling me I need to slow down. As you said that, it was like a teacher telling the student, this is what you must do. Mm -hmm. Yes. Indeed, and, I felt that. Yes. And as you was taking that time and really watching yourself, you also, in the same light, became the perfect student. You was very attentive. You listened to yourself like a really good student. The good student does not get distracted by what is happening around. The good student listens to the teacher. Because the student and the teacher are really this one and the same. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So as we have been talking, I've been observing your being. Was I'm very, very observant. <laughs> observing. <laughs> so... Let's move on now and let me show you some physical movements because during that questioning, you gave me what was needed. The next question is now, how do I do this? Okay. It's true? Yes, very true. Yes. So you said that I need to slow down and I need to breathe properly. So now I will show you how to. It's that simple. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes? So thumbs up if you can hear me. Yes? This means yes and this means no. <laughs> it's simple. Yeah? Okay, so whatever I show you here will be your prescription. Yes? Rather than a prescription where you eat or you take, this prescription here is a moving prescription. It's something you would do whenever is necessary. But my advice is for you to do it daily. And if you do it daily, make some time to, for you to be able to do this daily and your life will change. Your life path will change. Okay. So what you, what you want is to find a space where you are able just to move freely like thus. Well done. Okay, let's return. So because you work often on a desk, I can see at a moment your diaphragm is not fully engaged. I can see that your shoulders are actually like this. And right now, as you're standing there, you are giving me the impression that everything is fine. <laughs> so what I need you to do, Tana, is you to close your eyes gently. Good. Take a gentle breath through your nostrils and 
smile. Let that release. Ah, just sigh. Good. And as you sigh there, you notice your shoulders just dropped. Yes. So now, yes. So now, once again, I want you to smile. And as you breathe in through your nostrils, let the smile develop with that breath in. It's almost like you're smelling grandma's apple pie. Yes, or like Christmas dinner or, or Thanksgiving dinner. You just mm -hmm. smile, breathe it in, and then sigh. Ah. Oh, beautiful. So now you notice your head is now wanting to go a bit further back. You notice that? Mm -hmm. Good. Yes. So when we are doing this right now, this is me just teaching you. But when you do it by yourself, be very observant every moment of the way of what is happening. I am merely teaching you now how to conduct yourself for this prescription to work. Yes? <laughs> okay, once again, you're going to leave your hands just nice. Yes, and then once again, smiling and breathing in through your nostrils. Yes. And let that smile develop very gently. There's a very gentle breath in and then sigh. We never force anything. And then sigh. So now, if you notice, if your legs want to move around a bit, if you want to readjust the position you're standing, then do so. Is that correct? Yes. You notice now, what's happening now? Every time you breathe in and you sigh, your body has expanded just that bit further. It has relaxed just a bit that a bit further, which means whatever posture you're in is now slowly unhampering. It's slowly unwinding. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. And you can only imagine if you continue doing this gentle breath in and then a sigh, eventually your body is going to want to expand further. So at the moment, our hands are here. Okay. Once again, gentle breath in, smiling. Yes, and then sigh. Ah. Good. So now your shoulders are much more just relaxed now. Good. And continue breathing gently through your nostrils, smiling as you breathe in. It's almost like you're smelling something very nice, very good, very wholesome. And then just sigh out. And as you sigh out, allow your body to freely and honestly express itself as the sigh escapes your body. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes? So the image is this, every single time you breathe in, you will feel your body expand. But likewise, you will, have, you will feel goodness as it comes in. But as it expands, you will eventually start noticing where it is in your body that you're holding tension. Observe these tensions as you breathe into. It's almost like you're using the breath in as a handshake to the tensions or the anxiety you are feeling. It's almost like you're greeting the anxiety or the tension you have with, your, with yourself with the smile and the breath in. And then what you do is you sigh. And as you sigh, it's almost like you're saying, oh, okay, goodbye. You say goodbye to the tension, the goodbye to the anxiety, exactly. And as you do this, you start noticing your body will start expanding further and further. Yes? So let's do it again. Let's do that again. Yes. Breathing in gently through your nostrils, smiling, the smile develop, and then sigh. Ah. Good. It feels very natural. So now, if, if you notice now, your hands are actually wanting to slip away. Yes? Yes. <laughs> so once again, breathing gently through your nostrils, Smiling as it develops. Good, and then sighing. Ah, beautiful. So now really observe the sigh that you have. Observe from where it's emanating. The sigh should emanate from deep down, from wherever your tension is being held. When you sigh, really allow that tension just to go with that sigh. So the sound you make now should start reverberating within your own being. Smiling. Yes. So gently close your eyes. 
And let go of your hands now. Have inside. Ah. That's it. Have it again. Breathing gently. Have it. Ah. Just let it go. Let it go. Good. So now you're starting to feel your waist more, but you're starting to feel your your back more. Yes? And now you're starting to feel that your neck now is starting to loosen up more. Good. Mm -hmm. So once again, closing your eyes, breathing in gently, feel your body rise, expand, and then sigh. Ah. Good. Now, I really want you to observe where as your body expands with the breath in and the smile, when you release, really feel now it releasing into the ground, feeling everything release down your legs, down the, your, your back, down your legs and then into the ground. Yes, breathing in gently. Feel your body expand and then sigh. Ah, feel everything just sink into the ground. Wow. So here you feel grounded. Wow. Yes. So that's, that's another key word that your body was saying to you earlier on. Yes, it said it wanted to be more grounded. Yes. Yes. So we're slowly ticking off the boxes. We're, we're giving you all the house to do. Let's do this again. And you notice now this is all intention, okay? You bring in gently through your nostrils. Let the eyes close. Smile as the breath comes in. Good. And then sigh, ah. Feel everything melt down towards the ground. You, have you noticed now, as you breathe in, you feel lighter, isn't it? You feel like a, like a balloon being expanded. And as you sigh and let everything go, you feel become feel really heavy. You feel, oh, and everything sinks into the ground. Doesn't, is, are you feeling this? Yes. Good. So now let's do this. Place your hands back on, uh, uh, by your navel. Right, so right here, where I'm holding and where you are holding, this is the center of your being, okay? So earlier on, you said that, oh, my mind told me this. What we're going to do now is to remind you that the mind is not just here. Your mind is actually the whole of your body. Does this make sense? Yes. Many people say, oh, from, from where do you see the world? They say, I can see the world from here. This is not true. Your whole body is part of the world. <laughs> do you not right now feel the ground beneath your feet? Yes. Do you right now can hear what is happening around you? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what we're saying here is the whole being is actually, you are your whole being. You're not just in your head. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. So right now you place your hands in the center of your being. You're going to breathe in gently through your nostrils, smiling. Feel your belly expand as you breathe now. And then once again, sigh. Ah. And as you sigh, feel your whole your body melt or move into the center of your being. Yes? Good. And once again, breathe in gently through your nostrils. Feel everything expand and then sigh. Sigh into the center of your being. Good. You notice that your head starts to come forward now. Yes. So now you're really acknowledging now this is the center of your being. So even right now, as we're standing up, we are on legs. But remember, when you're moving around, try to move around with this at the center of your being. So I'll give you an example. Please stay still, right? Please stay still. When someone is thinking too much of the future, you'll find that their head is filled with fullness. And the body starts following the head along. Yes? When someone is scared or apprehensive, you'll find that they tend to be following their body. This makes sense. But if you are able just to move from the center of your being now, it makes a world of a difference. You're no longer thinking of the future or the past. 
you're being present with every step of the way. So likewise, right now, as you are stood stationary, be very aware that you are actually centered. Yes. So please. So what's, what's happening now is when we are centered, we are less inclined to lean. You'll find that many people, even in your peers or even yourself sometimes, you find it difficult to actually stand still. You find many of our older peers, they need to lean on things when they stood up. And likewise, when they sat down, they need to lean their back on things. And the reason why is they are no longer centered. So the more we practice this mindful meditation, you will find and acknowledge your center is here. So no matter what position you, you are in, whether you, you are sitting down, standing up, or lying down, you are always in those positions from your center. That makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Gently, with your eyes closed, breathing through your nostrils, feel good. Good. And then sigh. So as you sigh now, do you feel that your body is almost like it's sinking into the ground, isn't it? So what I want you to, you to do now, as, we, as you sigh out, I want you to loosen your knees. So right now your knees are fully locked. But watch me, Tana. This is me breathing in. And then watch. So what's happening here, as I sigh out, I use the sigh almost like it's a cushion. And I'm sitting on a stool. Yes? And this stool here is what we describe as the invisible stool or the natural saddle of the body. It means now that my sacrum is, nat is naturally tucked and my pelvis is fully squared. So in a standing position, my knees are no longer locked and all my quads and all my muscles are relaxed. I'm no longer swaying. I'm very grounded. Let's do this together. Okay, let me start with you. Gentle breath in. You can have, you can have your eyes open, Tana, for this. Yeah? Gentle breath in through your nostrils. And we're going to sigh. And towards the end of the sigh, I want you to slowly sit down. Yes? In your own time, Tana. Well done. Well done. Come back up here. It's really good. I can feel my shoulders dropping as I yes. do that. And that, that makes me feel very grounded. Well done. Let's do this again, yes? What we're going to do, the more you do this, we, uh, basically what we're doing is using that sigh as a cushion. Yeah, use a sigh as a cushion. Just Im imagine when you sigh and you, in quotes, sink down, just imagine when, if you're standing on quicksand, you do not drop very quickly. You just allow your body just to nestle down or settle down. Another good example is if we were to drop a pearl into water, the pearl does not drop down very quickly. It wafts and sways within the medium that it is dropping in. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes? Let's do this together. Breathe in gently, smiling. Then, ah. Good. So let's stay here for a bit. Right now, how are you feeling? Good. You're very relaxed. Good. So once again, from this position here, you're breathing gently, smiling, and then sigh. And if you sigh now, feel what's happening to your body. What does it want to do? My shoulders want to drop, and I want to drop down with them. Further. Good. Let's do some more, some more of this breath, yes? So breathing gently again. And then sigh. Ah. Find that stool. Good. Well done. So this is particularly helpful for everything, especially if you've been sat on the desk, sat on the chair the whole day. You're going to really allow everything to relax now. Yes? Once again. Yes. Breathing in gently through your nostrils, smiling. Good. Feel that goodness and then sigh. Ah. Well done. 
So turn in this position here, let go of your arms. Let go of them. So what you need to do now as you breathe in, raise your arms up and raise them by your elbows. <clears throat> yes, by the elbows, good. So this is breathing in, smiling, good. And as you sigh, allow your arms just to sigh down. Ah. Good. But once again, breathing in gently. And sigh, and sit down and let go of the arms. Ah, all at once. Well done. And again, breathing in gently. Don't forget to smile. <laughs> Evan sigh, Evan sit on that stool. Ah, well done. So now here you're developing your own seat. You no longer will be relying on an external seat. The reason why many people become tired is they sit down for too long. They lose the ability to sit in their own body. They end up sitting up here rather than sitting in here. Does this make sense? Mm, yes. yes. So let's do it again. Breathe in gently. And as you breathe in, raise your arms up with your elbows. And you're going to sigh and sit down. Ah. Good. And once again, breathing in gently. I've been sighing and ah, I sit you back on the seat. Good. Nice. You're noticing now as you're coming down, as you're sinking down, as you're sitting in the seat, you're starting to sit much more evenly. In the beginning, you kind of wafted down like this. Yes? But now you're finding that you're really relaxing both limbs at the same time in order for, in order for you to sit down more perpendicular, more, much more evenly. Let's continue. Breathing in gently through the nostrils. Smiling. Good. And then sigh. Ah. Sink into that seat. <laughs> Wonderful. Good. So, Tana, please tell me, at the moment in your body, is there any ache that you feel? Not right now, no. When we started, I did have an ache in my neck, but not right now, no. So it, it's incredible. You see how fast it was that you was able just to remove this ache by yourself. Okay, with yourself, Tana, you, like I say, you're still a spring chick. These aches that you have at the moment, they're still psychological. They have not yet fully manifested physically. When I help people with massaging, I have to massage the muscle because the, the, the stress has now manifested or coiled up into the muscle. But if you do these practices every day, your psychology will relax, which means your muscle will no longer hold this tension. Yes? But let's continue. I want to show you another thing that's going to really help you out. Okay? What we're going to do now is we're going to breathe in gently and then we're going to sigh into the seat. And then what we're going to introduce is a tilting of the seat. Yes, so this seat here has got a, a natural cushion on it. Yes, the knees are relaxed. Relax your legs to bounce on the, on the stool. But at the same time, there's a natural tilt to it. It tilts. You see this? So many of us, we kind of lose this as well. We lose this ability just to naturally tilt. And in order for your neck to release further, tuck your chin in slightly. You notice this, as you turn now, you've noticed that your neck and everything now is moving along with this tilt. You notice this? Yes. Okay. So what we're going to do, don't forget to smile. Let's do this together, yes? Breathing gently to rise and expand. Side to sink into the seat. Oh. Good. Don't forget to, yes, come back up again. Don't forget to your tuck, tuck your chin in, okay? Yeah, tuck your chin in. One, two, right there. Breathing gently. Good, breathing gently, smiling, and then sigh, sink into the seat. That's better. That's much better. Yeah, but you don't want to touch it in too much. It's just enough that, so you can feel that your your cranium or your head is connected to your neck. Yes. yes. So from up here now, what you need to do is just start just to turn a bit. 
Yeah, don't forget to tuck your tuck your chin in. Yes, and you and your legs now turn up. If you feel if you feel it's more comfortable, maybe you want to spread them just a bit further apart. Yes. So now we're going to introduce this tilt, this swivel. Yeah, tuck your chin in as you do this. Yes, breathing in gently. And then, ah. And as you sigh, use the end of the sigh just to let go of whatever tension it is in this, in this swing. You feel it, feel it, yes? Okay, right now we're just starting gently. I'm breathing in and then I'm sighing. Ah. Use a sigh to really just shake it out. Breathing in gently and then shake it out. Good. Breathing in gently and then shake it out. So now you want you might want to increase, decrease the momentum. Yeah, you breathe in gently and you just ah. Yes. <sighs> Thank you. That's the first proper side tunnel. <laughs> yeah, you try not to be too loud. <laughs> and, uh, it's okay. Yeah, make some noise. Yeah, you're breathing gently if you're not sure, smiling, and then ah. <sighs> awesome. And you notice with your eyes closed, you can really see where it is in your body that you're holding on to tension. So you just let go as the breath comes out. Ah. <sighs> And you do this and eventually you will hear some click, click, clicks. Or maybe if you've heard some clicks already, already within your own being. Have you heard any of your vertebrae relaxing and, and, uh, and clicking it? Ah, good. Breathing in and then ah. Good. The sign is very important. So psychologically, the sigh is also reminding your body just to let go. Yes? Psychologically, it's also reminding your ego just to let go. But even in everyday life, in the beginning, if you are able to watch yourself, if someone says something you do, you do not like, or you might see something you do not like, if you can remember these words, if someone says something you do not like, this is just a psychological help for you. You could just do this. Yeah, just you know, literally just flick your ears. Flick your ears forward so you can hear that. You can hear that. Yes, flick it. You can hear Flick so you can hear your, own, hear your ears. Yes? Mm -hmm. say, someone says that. If you do this now, you're telling yourself that, oh, they've said something, but it doesn't mean anything. So rather than, yes, yes. Does it make sense? So rather yeah. than just, just, just knee jerk or passive aggressive saying something back to them, you can just say to yourself, oh, whatever they said, I didn't like it. Does it make sense? So, so we don't, so we don't cause more, more stir within the fire. Does it make sense? Likewise, if you see something you you do not like, or you feel your body reacting to, just brush your eyes at that, and just acknowledge, oh, I saw something I didn't like. Yeah, does it make sense? So, in the beginning, we we're using these physiological and psychological cues to remind us that everything is fine. That everything is impermanent. Does it make sense? So I might say something you don't like, but no, that's just how you feel in the moment. So you do these things to remind you that's how it is. But the more you practice this, after a while you do not need to do this and do not need to do this. So I might say something, you just say within yourself, ah, oh, they just said something. Or ah, oh, I just, just saw something. Does this make sense? Good. Because the more we become peaceful within ourselves, the body becomes very beautiful. And then also the world that we see around us becomes very beautiful as well. We become less judgmental. Yes, and love begets love. <laughs> That's all I can say. So let's continue. You're breathing gently, sinking to your natural stool. Yes, and then breathing gently again, and then just sway left and right. Ah, and using the side to really let go of tension. Good. That's it. That's it, Tony. Ah. ah, good. And eventually, what's going to happen with your arms dead weight like this? You are able to tap, 
your own body. Yes, this is where qigong tapping comes from. The body becomes dead weight. And what we're doing here is the back hand, it actually taps onto the right kidney. You see that? The left hand ends up tapping the right kidney. Yes, and then the right hand ends up tapping the left kidney. And likewise, in the front, when it turns it is, it starts, the whole of this arm here starts patting here. It pats all along here. You see this? So as you do this with your breath, ah, just sigh and let go. This is self-massage. You see? But really just breathing in gently and just swing. Just let your body swing. Oh. At the moment, if you can't reach the tenor, just be very honest with what your body is allowing, allowing you to do. If you can't reach here, let it reach wherever it, need, where, where, wherever it can reach. Does it make sense? Yes. Because as you release here and relax, your body is going to start tapping where it needs to tap. Does it make sense? Never force your body to do anything. Just breathe in gently and use the out breath to allow your body to freely express itself. And the more you do that, eventually the body becomes very, <laughs> it becomes very, very beautiful. So you'll be able to dance and everything. You understand? Yes. That's good, Hannah. Yes. So you can incorporate what you did there as well. Use your breath though, sink in and do the same movements as, you do, as you're doing there. Breathing in and then, ah. Yeah, it's always with the out breath. You're breathing, always sick, sick of breathing. Breathing in gently through your nostrils, smiling, and then, <sighs> yes, well done, good. We're always sinking into your seat. The reason why we always sink into our seat is just reminds us to connect our chin down. It just reminds us that we're one being, we're one whole being. Yeah, don't touch too too much. This this much on. Not 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 like this, but about here. You see? Oh, like right there. Okay. Yeah, in a moment you still need to work on your diaphragm. Okay, we'll we continue. So here's another thing, Tana. Let me show you now this. What you're going to do now is we're going to find our natural seat, yes? You're breathing gently, and you're going to naturally sink down onto your seat. You're going to tuck your chin in. And in your case, you're up to here. So what I want you to do now, Tana, I want you to clench your, your glutes. Yeah, clench your glutes without your hands. But oh, watch me actually, Tana. Tana, watch me. Yeah, watch me. I'm like this. I'm gonna hold onto my neck here. I'm clenching my bum cheek, and then I'm gonna shake. Just try it. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Once again, clench your bum, bum. Thrust, thrust forward. Thrust, thrust your crutch forward and clench your bum. Yeah, watch. Thrust forward like this. Yes, thrust forward, clench your bum. Yes, tuck your chin in, hold your neck and just gently like this. But when you when you shake like this, do not shake your your do not shake from up here. If needs be, raise your elbows a bit higher. Try to meet your elbows together. You want you want to isolate your thoracic area. Hold this. Try to meet your elbows together. So you're really squeezing your head and then just and the the area you're shaking is down here. That's it. Yes, shake from your waist. Move from your waist. That's it. There we go. Breathe in gently and do this. How, how, how does that make you feel? You feel release. It, it, it's great on my neck. Yes. It's very good on my neck. Yes, that's it. So breathe in gently. Let your elbows try to meet, um, Tana. Yes. If you let your elbows meet, it means the back of your shoulders will open up further. Yeah? If your elbows meet, it means here will open up further. Yes. And then, yes. Yeah. And continue breathing as you do that. How does that feel? Feels great on, on my neck. Yes. So that is, that, that is also another way of self-massaging. So you'll, you'll notice a wrong way of self-massaging is actually doing this. And I'll tell you why. When you just, here and you just rub here, it's very isolated. So you might think he is aching, but when you do this, look what's happening to his shoulder. We, are, we end up wearing out the shoulder by massaging here. But if you have, a, if you have this muscle that is, that is tense, what you need to do is actually use hold on both sides and just shake. 
Yes, you feel what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Yes. Likewise, if your neck is aching, you tuck your chin in, you hold onto your neck, and you just move your whole your spine. You notice the difference, Tanner? Yes. Yeah, so we're not isolating the massage. We're using the whole body to relax that area. Does it make sense? So here's another thing. When people say, oh, I have a problem with my elbow and all these things, the reason why is they've been doing the same movement over and over again. So when they think, oh, you need to, uh, they need to massage the elbow to make it better, that's, that's incorrect. What they need to do is actually move their whole body away from, away from that pain. Does it make sense? You need to move your whole body, allow your body to freely express itself so this pain is no longer there. Because the pain was there because you were forcing your, your body to be doing this the whole day. <laughs> Does it make sense? Yeah, or, or like this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, 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 even with your, so if you have carpal, if you have problems with your wrist as well, mm -hmm. yeah, do, you, do you have any problems with that? I, I don't, fortunately, because I tend to do the... Uh, wrist exercises. Well done. Yeah. So fortunately, I, I do not have have that, but um, working in front of a computer, I mean, I think I'll I'll be due for wrist pain at some point working <laughs> on a computer constantly. Yeah. So let me show you now something that's going to help you further with this. So right there, then you show me these exercises. Yes. So this one here is still isolated. Let me show you what what is even better than this. What you're going to do is this, is this together. Once again, let's find our natural saddle, Tanner. Yeah, breathe in gently, and then ah, sigh into your natural stool. Good. You feel your core really your core really tightening up, isn't it? Well done, it becomes solid. So what you do to help your wrist and to hold your arms, but also your scapula, to free your hold of your arms, not just the wrist, this is what you do. You imagine you're picking something up here, look. Yeah, pick yourself up here, you're gonna turn around. Good, turn around. Pull your elbows right back. Right back, yeah, pull your elbows right back. And then you're releasing back onto the ground again. Ah. So what you're going to do, you're gonna do, do this with an in-breath. Gently breathing and you smile as you do this, yeah? Let's do it together. There's a curl, it's a curl, the curl is like this. Yes, and pull it back. Smiling. And then sigh. How did that feel? Oh, man. Amazing. It's, ama it's amazing, isn't it? It is. It's a life it's, it's amazing with movements so simple and just being mindful of your breath, how, yeah. how, how different it can make your body feel. Right, let's do it again, yeah? Let's do it again. Let me get yes. my side and see what's happening, yes? So I'm lifting it up right here. I'm lifting up from here. My elbows, my elbows are quite out. Yeah, lift up here. Yes, turn everything in. You turn it in. Kind of like that? Yes, like that, and then pull it back. Good, then pull it back, breathing in to this. Pull, breathing in as you pull right back. I mean, ah. Yes, the more you do this, Tana, was at a moment you have like a, uh, what they call, rounded shoulders. Mm -hmm. It's been sat down for so long. What's gonna happen, the more you do this, you breathe in and you breathe in really deeply up. Smiling, yeah? Put the chin in. And look at the back, look what happens to the back. You've got yeah, it engaged. back gets worn, get, yeah. You get a nice convex skin, yeah? The more you do this, you're gonna solve your rounded shoulders. Does this make sense? Indeed, yes. <laughs> Let's do some more builds, but that's what you need. Yes, breathing gently, smiling, and then sigh into that seat. Ah. We're lifting up, good. Breathing, pulling the elbows back, and then, ah. mm. good. Let's do more, breathing in gently. Keep breathing in as you pull your elbows back. Keep breathing in. And if you, if you can, at this peak here, tense your glutes. Tense your bum as you're pulling your elbows back. Yeah? And then, ah, let go. <sighs> oh, that felt good, didn't it?
Mm-hmm. Especially if you your bum towards the end, isn't it? Let's do that one more time with the engaged glutes. Yeah, let's do it again. Breathing in, pulling up, turn, yes. Pull your elbows and then, yeah, clench that bottom, tuck your chin forward, turn up. Yeah, you feel the straining on your neck as well. Yes, that's it. And then let release. Ah, oh, feel the difference. Yes. It's really important when you tuck your chin in like this and you turn up here and you tuck your chin in here and also clench your bum, you know, really pull to hold the spine like forwards. Here's what you see the whole spine goes like this. Yeah, then ah, oh, let go. Yes, try again. Yes. Moving gently, raising it up. Pulling the elbows right back. Good. Pull the elbows further back as much as you can. Good. And then let go. <sighs> oh, my goodness. And it's amazing with just these breathing techniques of how, how, how that can affect the body. Amazing. The breathing techniques and the sim- the sim- what, what seem like might be simple motions, but they're, they, they have their purpose. Yes. So, Tana, I've shown you prescriptions. Yes? Yes. I don't know, have you recorded this yourself? Uh, I have not, no. Okay, so do you mind if I upload this? No, I would love for you to. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to upload it and then you can watch it again That'd and again. Great. Yes, and also it's going to be very helpful for other people to see. In fact, please tell the viewers, Tana, how, how are you feeling? I, I, I had some neck pain when, when, we were, when we had started talking just discussing random stuff. But now that we've done all of these motions, I, I, feel, I feel ready to go out and run. Yeah. <laughs> Hop a flight over, Kai. Let's, uh, let's go for a run down the neighborhood real quick. Yeah, we have a swim, I love swimming. <laughs> uh, swimming's great too, yep. So Tana, I'd like to offer you, um, so also I do a Zoom Qigong, Li Qigong class. I, I saw your, your video on it, uh, was that yesterday it was posted? Yes, yes. Yeah. So if you wish to, please let me know and you can join along that class. Yes. What, um, what's the date and the time that you have it? Do you have it once per week? So at the moment it's once per week. It's going to be Sundays. At, uh, the timing, I'm not sure if it's going to be good for you. How, how many hours difference are you? Uh, so it's 5 p.m. there now. I guess it would be about 6.06 .06 there right now. So it's a five hour difference backward. Here. Oh, this is not too bad. Okay. Yeah. What I'll do is after this, I'll send you a link to, to, to join this group. Perfect. And then the, the, the class is free. It's a free class, but if people want to, they can donate me money. But the main point of this, I want to teach this freely so people can share it for themselves and their family. But I'm not giving this link just to anyone. Does this make sense? We can't I have appreciate the room, it. Yeah, we can't have the room filled up with many people just having a laugh <laughs> don't want yeah don't want weirdos ignorant people coming in trying yeah. to, to play pranks yes so well done tenor you you have honored me and it has been my honor to help you to my best abilities the, the pleasure was all mine it was it was a great pleasure just to meet with you and talk with you i like i said i enjoy watching your videos very much so mm. i i look forward to the next time we meet hopefully uh very soon after all this is over, it'll be in person. Yes. And let me remind you again. Today, you showed to me and to yourself that you are your teacher and you are your student. You, you're a beautiful being. Continue being a beautiful being. Was We need more of us in this world to be good examples for others. Here, here. May you be well, may your family be well, may all and everyone you love be well and in good spirits. Or meet you for all. Thank you, Kai. I do appreciate it. That was amazing. Take care. Take care, Kai. See you soon. Bye-bye. Yeah, Bye-bye. Wow. Chicka